Okay, I'm doing something a lot different for me this year. <sighs> gonna use an auto mower. I know, I know, you're all saying, wait, don't you love mowing? Don't you love doing all this stuff? I'm still gonna be mowing, don't get me wrong, like this is hopefully going to take a huge portion of it, but I'll show you here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you the main three reasons why I'm gonna use an auto mower this year. Then I'll go give you a little tour, we'll walk around the backyard and I'll kind of show you my plans for it. I would argue that I have one of the most complicated <laughs> yards to use an auto mower, at least for the strategy that I'm using. You'll see, we'll take a little tour here in a minute. But for now, let's talk about those three reasons. I'm also gonna do a little unboxing here uh, just while I'm talking to you about the reasons why I'm gonna use an auto mower this year on my lawn. Now you might be thinking that the reason is because Husqvarna reached out to me and they wanted me to use an auto mower on my lawn. That is not true. This did come from Husqvarna. They sent this to me for free, but I was the one that reached out to them. I'm the one that wanted to have an auto mower. Um, again, big planes in my head. I'll show you here in a little bit. I've watched a couple of install videos and these actually do come in handy. So we're saving those. Power supply. Looks like cables and hardware for the outlet. Quick guide and operation manual. This is bigger than I expected. Alright, so reason number one. Have you ever heard the saying, mow low, mow often? Well, the reason that is a saying is because, at least with Bermuda grass, several other grass types also, but if you're gonna mow low, mowing more consistently is key to the health of the grass, helping it spread horizontally, better coverage, all kinds of different benefits from mowing more often. Well, these auto mowers mow the grass every day or night. The best I was ever able to do mowing the grass myself was two, possibly two and a half times a week. And when I did that consistently, it looked great. When you get behind and the Bermuda grows a little bit taller and you cut it short again, you're gonna have some scalping. Well, if you're always cutting off just a tiny little piece of the grass blade at a time, that grass is gonna stay more healthy and you'll avoid scalping. But don't get me wrong, I'm a little bit skeptical that this is gonna work as well as Brett Goodyear says it's going to. Brett has told me that with his auto mower down there in Florida on his Bermuda grass, that he doesn't mow anymore. Basically, the auto mower does everything. Again, I'm skeptical and I'm more so hoping that it's gonna take care of a bulk of the work and I can just mow less often. But again, Husqvarna and Brett assure me that it's gonna exceed my expectations and it's going to take care of pretty much all the mowing. It's gonna keep that grass short and keep it looking really good. We'll see. So I have like 35,000-ish square feet of short turf so I, I, that I keep about a half an inch, something like that. And that's why I'm skeptical because obviously that's a pretty large area, but that's what this mower is built for. This is the Husqvarna Auto Mower 430X. And if you look up on their website, you can see a list of all the auto mowers and basically what size of lawn or size of mowing area they're each rated for. So that's, they asked me about my lawn and about the situation and that's why they sent me this one is because it's made to handle that kind of square footage. So let's get to reason number two why I'm gonna use an auto mower on my lawn this year. And that is to save money. That may be a little bit counterintuitive actually because these things are not exactly what you probably call cheap on the front end. Until you start comparing it to, in my case, real mowers, uh, the used greens mower market, I've seen a ton of inflation over the past couple years, along with everything else, but they're getting more popular, and so that's why the prices just keep going up and up. So if you start comparing the prices to one of these to a used greens mower, all of a sudden that expense isn't too absurd. So then you factor in that you don't have to buy gas for this thing, it's electric, so you have to pay for some electricity, right? But also, something that I did last year was I paid a couple of different guys to come help me mow, to try to keep up with all the mowing that I do around here. So, if the auto mower can keep up and can be that guy for me, I don't think either one of them are even available to help me out this summer anymore anyway, but anyway, if this thing can help me keep up with a lot of that to where it can be my employee, but for free, that's gonna save me some money also. In the interest of keeping up with the unboxing here, this is one of the installation kits. For the size of my yard, they sent me two of these. So we've got a bunch of cable, and this goes, in my case, underground. So on taller lawns, if you keep your grass a little bit taller, this cable can just go on the ground and hide underground. So if you're cutting at three inches, it's not gonna hit this cable. But when I cut it half an inch, 
they recommend that I actually bury this cable. Got these stakes that also go, again, I think mostly for the above ground installs. There's no reason for me to use stakes if I'm burying it underground. But that's why I say that I probably have one of the most complicated installs because if I'm gonna have to bury it underground. Obviously that takes more work. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I'm gonna do that, whether I'm going to rent a little like mini trencher for laying cables. I also know a guy who at least used to, I don't know if he does anymore, but used to sell these things and do the professional installs. Um, and if he still has the tool that they use for like laying the cable, it like rolls on the ground, cuts a line, and then like, you know, pushes the cable down into the ground, that would be awesome. Otherwise, I'll be using like a stick edger to cut a little line in certain places, and then possibly even like my straight edge here to just go through, cut a line, push the cord down in there, um, either push it back together or just fill it with sand. I do, I, I'm gonna do a top dressing over my entire yard this year, so I could just leave those little trenches open and just let the sand fill that in. So, but, but the reason mine's more complicated is because there are gonna be a lot of curved lines. Again, I'll show you here in a minute. Now these mowers can actually cut pretty low. I was impressed seeing the lowest height of cut on a lot of these models when I was looking online at the list. But since I'm cutting it half an inch or possibly even lower now because they sent me fairway height of cut kit. So this can cut down, I wanna say that it was 0.3 inches, don't quote me on that. I, I should probably look that kind of stuff up before I make these videos, huh? But anyway, cut definitely low enough for what I wanna do on my lawn. And the fairway kit is basically as simple as these pieces that go under the cutting part to lower the blades down lower in the unit. Um, I was actually kind of curious how that worked out. I wondered how the wheel, because these wheels, you know, might float on the turf a little bit, so I wondered how they would get the whole thing to lower down, but it makes sense. You just lower the blades down farther in the mower, and it's gonna cut lower. Duh. <laughs> okay, now on to reason number three, and that is to save time. That's probably the biggest reason anybody would want to use one of these is so that you don't have to go out and mow on your own. That's one of the big marketing strategies that Husqvarna has used is I've seen advertisements that say, what would you do with an extra hour a week or something like that? Because yeah, you're just saving time. This one is particularly important to me this year uh, because one of the big themes to my channel, to my lawn care strategy this year is going to be to spend less time on the lawn and more time playing golf. As you might know, there's a golf course in the backyard here. My son is getting a lot more into golf. He's five years old now, turning six this summer. And the more he gets into it, the more I'm realizing that I need to start prioritizing my time. And that was a big reason why I reached out to Husqvarna. I was just thinking, I mean, obviously, if I can spend less time mowing, and this is gonna do a big bulk of it for me, I can spend more time with my family. And over this past year, and definitely over this past winter, uh, being a dad is something that my perspective has changed on kind of completely. I had this really cool moment where my wife, one of our good friends, who I'm hoping to have on my uh, Can You Even Mow Bro series this year, and a different podcast all at the same time, basically recommended this book to me called The Intentional Father by John Tyson. The book is particularly geared toward being a dad to sons, but I think it's something that's important for any dad to read. Um, he's also, I think, teased that he's gonna come up with a program similar for dads of daughters. I have both, so I'm excited about that one as well. But at the same time that I started reading this book, I was only like a chapter into it. I got messages from a few different dads that you guys know. There's a handful of these guys that we have now, a chat group, um, just because I, I think it was divine intervention. They all messaged me about the same time about having kind of struggles in this area, just like I was. And I was just getting into that period in life where I was gonna kind of turn a 180 in my fatherhood. And it sort of worked out perfect that when all these people messaged me, I said, there's no way this isn't divine intervention. So we've got this group of dads, as you can imagine with the YouTube channel about mowing, I've made a lot of friends that are dads. Um, but this group has been super cool because we're all doing this as like a book group, reading through it together and discussing. And it has opened up conversation that I never imagined that it would have. I don't know if these guys want me telling who they are, but I'll, I will just tell you that one of the guys, I didn't know this, but didn't have a dad basically involved in his life, or he has a dad, but he wasn't involved in the way a dad should be when he was growing up. Um, another guy, you know, someone who said, like for me, I was really close to my dad. My dad has been an amazing dad. And then basically everything in between represented in this group. And it has opened up some conversations and some, some wound healing that I never would have guessed, and it's nothing short of God intervening and sending these things into my life at the right time to where we could come up with this stuff. So I know I'm going off on a tangent, but basically, all of that coming together, and this winter has been all in my head, and so basically spending less time on the lawn and spending more time with my family is something that's gonna get more common around here. Um, so, 
Husqvarna, thanks for sending this because obviously you're helping me accomplish my goal of spending more time with my family, playing more golf out here. And, and maybe I need to get better at golf in general. If you guys have watched any of the videos, you know that I'm horrible. But uh, <laughs> I've got this little golf course and so I have no excuses anymore. My son's gonna be better than me anytime, probably very soon. And so I'm gonna get better at golf too. There's another goal <laughs> for this summer. But yeah, that's probably it for the main three reasons for me. Um, I might come up with some small ones over the course of this summer. We'll talk about that later. But let's go take a little tour around the lawn and I'll show you kind of what I'm gonna have this auto mower do. Uh, the install is gonna be complicated, but uh, I'm dedicated, I'm getting started early. There's ice and snow on the ground right now. So here in the near future, if I start digging these trenches to put the line down, surely I can get it done before mowing season starts. Okay, let's take a look around the yard here. So this is the area right outside my shed, um, right where I'm standing, right outside the door to the shed. I wanna make this nice and flat and turn it into a tee box for Little Tool so that he can have his own little, I don't know, what is this, 20 yards or something? 30, I don't know, I'm terrible at guessing distance, but this is gonna be a little fairway for him leading up to Sweet Ocala number one. If you remember how I had this set up, I have the fairways and then I have what I was calling the rough, I don't remember exactly what I was calling it, but have the taller areas the first cut or the rough on the outside of the fairways all the way around my lawn. I do have some renovation to do over here. This part has never been sand leveled. I have some weeds to kill. I'm gonna, I'm gonna renovate this part, I guess, and bring it from like crappy lawn to really nice, just like the area all the way around my house. So there's some renovation to be done here, but then this is gonna be a fairway just like right outside my house, like on the backyard and things. But this ditch that runs all the way around my yard, if you recall, I had the rough set up all the way around that because I couldn't reel mow right up to the ditch. You can kind of see it here, but I've got my half inch fairway cut going not in a straight line on the ditch. It's like a curl. I think that looks better to have this sort of like undulation to the line. I think I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, but as you can kind of imagine, I'm going to have to bury that cable all along that line because the auto mower is gonna be cutting half an inch or so, and that's gonna be cutting this area. It needs to stay off of the rough because the rough's gonna be more like two to three inches or something. And I'll keep mowing that taller rough area with the Titan Max or the Time Master or the Pro Stripe, whatever. Any rotary mower that will cut up that high. But that rough is gonna go on this new fairway also. So on both sides of the ditch, there's gonna be this, this sort of curved line, tall grass versus the half inch. Um, both sides of the ditch here and on both sides of the rock bed here, uh, all the way around the sand trap, there's a rough area. And then all the way down the ditch and around the bridges, there's like a little extra space um, that I keep taller, but the actual bridges themselves are gonna be half an inch. So the auto mower is gonna do the bridges, but it's gonna leave like a taller section where it's probably hard for that mower to get where it's real steep going up the sides of those bridges. So I'll still have a fair bit to mow and trim and that sort of fun stuff, uh, but the auto mower is gonna take a huge bulk of it. As you can see, that fairway, the whole side yard, backyard, and the front yard. So the goal is to rig up some sort of a doggy door. I'm not sure exactly what that's gonna look like, but again, I'll show the process. I'm gonna figure this out and that mower is gonna go under the fence, through the fence, and do the front yard also. Now I also have a lot of live edge beds. I'm pretty sure that I just finished putting in a live edge bed on that other corner and that completed having live edge garden beds all the way around my house. I, I always hated mowing right up against the house or really string trimming up against the house. So I just put in a flower bed everywhere so I didn't have to mow it because a live edge bed I could mow right up over the edge. The auto mower, I'm not sure exactly how that's gonna work. You have to stay a certain distance away. They give you a, a guide. Do you stay this far away from a sidewalk edge, this far away from you know, a tree or whatever. They give you like a guide for that. So I'm not sure exactly what they're gonna tell me to do how far away to stay from the live edge bed because you can imagine if a wheel goes off onto that, the mower's gonna be stuck and it's not gonna finish mowing. So there will be some trimming to do um, all along the live edge beds, I'm assuming. If I, can, if I can measure it out perfect and get that auto mower to mow like right up to the edge, that would be ideal. But I edge those anyway. I have to edge those with my rotary scissors. So it won't be that big of a deal to go edge them, you know, vertically with the rotary scissors or a string trimmer and then just come back and do a pass this way to cut all the grass that's left on the very edge of that uh, live edge bed. I'm still trying to decide what I'm gonna do with the driveway here and that little section on the other side, but I think, because there's a way they tell you how to like get the mower to go across the driveway and come back or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna rig it up to go across the driveway, mow that little section over there, and I'm probably just gonna ask my neighbors if they're okay with me setting it up to mow that whole little section instead of just my half like I've done in the past, which is more goofy than anything. I just left it that way because it got tons of comments on TikTok and Instagram videos um, because people were calling me petty the whole time. 
but yeah, I think I'm just gonna have it mow that whole section. I can't imagine them not wanting to have the robot mower do part of their mowing also, right? But yeah, basically that's why I think it's gonna be pretty complicated is because there's so many things for the auto mower to have to go around, like the sand trap and the bridge, that ditch, and then staying away from all the live edge beds. So this is gonna be the most complicated install, but I'm, I am, But I am dead set on doing the install very meticulously because if I do that, the auto mower is gonna take care of a lot, you know what I mean, like getting it right next to the edges and everything, so that I have the, as little amount of work to do as possible, less time on lawn work, more time with family this year. That's kind of the plan. So that's gonna kind of wrap it up for this video. Um, I, there's lots more to come from the auto mower. I'm gonna be showing as much of the process as I can. But you all know that it's not gonna keep me from real mowing. In fact, my two greens, I'm gonna lower down because if I have less time to mow on the rest of my yard, I'll have more time to spend on the greens. That doesn't take me all that long to mow anyway, so I can lower the height of cut down on those, and I think that's gonna get pretty cool too. So there's definitely still gonna be real mowing going on around here. But uh, I'm really encouraged by what Brett has been saying about loving his auto mower and basically he has not been mowing ever since he started uh, turning it loose. So I'm excited about that. Again, thank you Husqvarna. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I'll keep you guys posted. We're gonna do a lot of videos like I said. So uh, we'll see you later. I hope you have a wonderful day.